Hello and welcome to my second video on uh, this Vedic spirituality channel. Um, I'm your host, my name is Madan Gopal Das and I'm excited to talk to you about Vedic spirituality and Vedic philosophy. And uh, today's topic will be about the power of detachment. Um, one of the very first lessons uh, we learn from the Vedic philosophy is that we, our real self, is not the body and not the mind. Um, there are, so to say, different levels of existence. We have uh, the gross body, which consists of gross elements, and uh, everybody knows this is our physical appearance <coughs> with all his uh, organs and senses. And then there is a subtle body um, which consists of the mind, the intelligent, intelligence and the ego. The ego means this is our identification. We, ident we identify as as a man, as a woman, we ad identify ourselves with a certain nationality or um, a certain uh, walk of life. Like, yeah. <clears throat> so this is the, the gross body consisting of the senses and um, the subtle body which is, consists of the mind, the intelligence and the, the ego. But what we learn from the Vedic scriptures um, is that beyond uh, these two bodies there is the real eternal self and that is the source of the consciousness. Of the consciousness. When this spark, this spiritual spark, leaves the body, then the body is completely inactive. That we see when we die, the spiritual spark leaves the body and what is left is just a lump of matter which will rot and dissolve and mix with the other material elements. So, <coughs> um, there's a big imp importance is given that we uh, stop identifying ourselves with uh, the lower self, which means the body and also the subtle body, and that we learn to, uh, that we again <coughs> find back to our eternal identity as a spirit soul as an eternal part of the whole. So, <clears throat> and um, now to the topic of um, detachment. So if we understand this, that we are not this body, and we understand that we also not our, our thoughts and our ideas, that these are also temporary uh, cloths which are put over the eternal soul, then if we understand this, then we can harness the power of detachment. Um, so, uh, that will allow us to come to a state, to a meditative state of, um, so to say, neutrality, where we will, all these pains and pleasures, all the dualities of life, will become not important anymore and they will, be, they will um, lose their weight on us. Like, uh, as long we are identifying with our body, whatever seems to be good to our senses, what we enjoy, so to say, and whatever is not good to our senses, what we don't, what we hate, so to say, that is, there's always a duality if we are identifying with the body. But if we know that we are not the body, then this duality of liking and disliking will loosen its grip over us and we become more free. And also in the subtle, subtle body, we have many ideas, we have a certain mentality we have, we have certain desires. And if we learn to step, to step back and look at them like, like they are a third party, we are not uh, identifying with them that they are our, that, that, that they are me, 
they are defining me, because of them I am existing, if we can step back from that and see that I'm actually my existence has more value than just a certain idea or certain ideology, then all the pains and pleasures which are connected to these certain ideologies and ideas, they <coughs> will, will fade and lose the grip over us. And that makes us, that makes our mind more free, that makes our uh, emotional state more free. We become more free and we elevate to a higher sense of happiness, which lies beyond the duality of good and bad, as we usually know it in the world. I would like to share with you the view of this beautiful place. It's a small town in Switzerland, it's called Brieg. And uh, actually in this place, where is this house, this, uh, this red house, just this small... I was going to school there for five years and uh, I, was, I used to live in this place and many, pla many times I came to this, to this spot. It's very beautiful to sit and uh, you've, it's above, you can see over the small town and it's very poetic because for me because it's you like you're like a loop of from the busy activities of the in the town and at the same time you have a beautiful view over the mountains it's you can see far inside the valley actually this this mountain there or this there's uh, the village i grew up and here beautiful mountains and um, it's very poetic because down in the town the people are very busy they're living in the world of duality chasing um, their daily activities buying stuff busy earning money uh, busy taking care of their families but in the same time the mountains beside them they are since millions of years standing there, season after season, and they not seem to care what is so important for the people down here. Uh, every day new newspapers are printed, tons and tons of papers are thrown away, and people, uh, people's mind is engaged in actually very narrow-minded thoughts. But besides them, the mountains, they're like in a deep meditation. In a, and their value is much more profound than this short-lived mentality of the people compared to the short-lived mentality of the people. So similarly, if we realize that our real identity, our eternal identity is not this uh, material, not this body and also not this mind which is always changing and always <laughs> chasing new excitements um, <clears throat> then we, we uplift to a much higher consciousness and a much more profound uh, way of life or more profound happiness because we are, we can we'll we will come beyond the dualities of the temporary world and we can taste the value of, the, of eternity. So, um, yeah. so this was a short video for today. Um, and um, if you liked it, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, give a thumbs up. It will help me to continue with this channel. And um, see you tomorrow.